Hi everyone, I am Paolo Mantovani from Columbia University. Uh, thank you from the System Level Design Group for watching this ICCAD 2020 special session presentation about open source tools and platform for agile development of specialized architecture. I will be presenting an overview of our open source platform ESP for the agile design integration and prototyping of heterogeneous systems. My focus in the past few years as an associate research scientist in the system level design group at Columbia has been to lead the development of the ESP platform uh, with the hope that uh, it can really serve the growing open source hardware community uh, to cope with the complexity of uh, heterogeneous systems and with particular attention to specialized hardware accelerators and to uh, their integration in large systems. Uh, why building a new platform? Why ESP? So um, everyone agrees nowadays that accelerators are fundamental in modern SOCs uh, to meet the efficiency and the performance targets. A single SOC, in fact, uh, can uh, integrate natural language processors, graph search accelerators, computer vision or deep learning engines and so on. And uh, these heterogeneous systems come at a price in terms of complexity. Uh, which really calls for an agile integration flow that automates the generation of some hardware component and interfaces and the corresponding software APIs. Uh, now, given the variety of different application domain, we also understand that a truly agile flow uh, must also support the specification of accelerators at different levels of abstraction using the appropriate language to specify the design of the IP block that solves a particular problem or that implements a particular algorithm. And then finally, uh, since we're seeing a proliferation of IP blocks, which is largely fueled uh, by the growing open source hardware community, we really realize that um, an agile flow must fully embrace the idea of a modular design meant for IP reuse. And thus, it needs to provide designers with the simple and the seamless flow to integrate existing IP blocks together with newly developed accelerators. Now, with this in mind, we developed OpenESP, which is a platform for the agile design and integration of heterogeneous SOCs. A platform combines a flexible architecture with a design methodology. And for ESP, this methodology is in fact a collection of highly automated design and integration flows for accelerators. So let me give you a brief overview of ESP. The architecture itself is based on a network on chip for scalability purposes. Users can select the size of the NOC mesh and define each tile as a processor tile, an accelerator tile, a memory tile, or one uh, auxiliary tile. Now this auxiliary tile integrates shared peripherals such as UART, Ethernet and the interrupt controller. All of the memory tiles implement the necessary I.O. to access memory. Uh, each of these memory tiles offer an independent channel to external memory. This can be either a DDR link or an FPGA based link in case the DDR controller is not available for the technology. Processor and accelerator tiles are the most interesting ones. These are based on sockets, which are the key architecture element that enables all of the various flows in ESP. Sockets use standard bus interfaces to integrate third-party IPs, as well as aggressive automation to generate wrappers for newly designed accelerators that come from high-level synthesis flows or domain-specific flows. These ESP sockets are not just implementing interfaces though, but they also provide components and platform services some of which are also runtime configurable. These services decouple the accelerator design from the rest of the system, such that ESP users don't have to rethink at every time they design an accelerator about how to access memory, how to maintain coherency, how to monitor performance or deliver internets. And so the socket really provides the decoupling between the accelerator and the system that makes the ESP architecture support for the agile design flow. 
And what's this agile design flow? What's this companion methodology defined by the ESP platform? So the design methodology in ESP combines two main flows. The first one is the accelerator flow, which as I anticipated is a collection of multiple flows for which we accept different levels of abstraction and different languages as inputs for the specification of the new accelerator. Uh, designers can choose between RTL, C, C++ through high level synthesis or system C, or move to higher level of abstraction for deep learning, for example, uh, leveraging the HLS for ML open source tool to convert a, a Keras TensorFlow or PyTorch model into HLS ready specification. Now for all of these HLS based uh, design flows, ESP has automation to quickly implement a library of reusable IP blocks together with their companion drivers and test applications. For RTL designs, instead ESP offers example as well as a third party flow that helps the integration of existing blocks. This also supports the execution of the unmodified software stack that comes with the IP block. Now from this library, users of ESP can take advantage of a configuration GUI and of a sequence of push button steps to run unit tests, simulate the full system and implement their prototype on FPGA. The ESP SOC flow is centered around the configuration GUI, which allows to place the components on a configurable size mesh and uh, pick which accelerator will go in which tile or which CPU or um, where the memory tiles are, where the IO tile or the auxiliary tile is. Now for each uh, HLS based component, users can also select the implementation point that corresponds to a particular set of HLS synthesis partner. This enables an agile flow to compare the trade-offs among such implementations and to perform a system level design space exploration when running on FPGA. Uh, in addition from the GUI users can choose the type of CPU core, uh, configure the capacity of the uh, shared cache hierarchy and enable performance counters. When uh, users go through the agile ESP flow for accelerators, they always follow a similar sequence of steps. Uh, first, ESP generates a skeleton based on a few user inputs that include, for example, the list of configuration registers. Then designers need to customize the uh, skeleton and implement the, the application specific behavior. This step is fully automated instead for the deep learning accelerators. Um, but for both the main specific and HLS-based flows, users can then go and specify different sets of synthesis programs, so generate multiple RTL implementations, each with a different area or power versus performance trade-off. If instead users of ESP want to integrate an existing IP block, then they follow a slightly different path, in which they define the accelerator name uh, together with the list of source RTL files and of software objects, the unmodified software stack that is needed to control the accelerator. Uh, then users need to complete an RTL wrapper that is simply connecting wires and typically has no logic at all, as long as the accelerator uses uh, a standard bus interface to communicate. Now, both flows uh, for new accelerators and existing IP blocks merge into the Agile ESP SOC flow. This is fully automated, really, and it includes the generation of the software stack and the compilation of the operating system together with all of the device drivers and the applications to control and test the accelerators that you placed into the ESP instance. This allows users to really generate in the span of a few hours a, an FPGA prototype ready to test their new components. So let me now introduce the main components of the ESP accelerator socket and to show how this can modularly degenerate into the simpler interface used for the third party IP blocks. Uh, the ESP accelerator socket integrates a TLB, a DMA controller, a set of configuration registers, these are generated from the user input, and a collection of proxy components that translate memory transactions and interrupts into packets for the network on chip. 
Accelerators don't need to be aware at all of the details of the coherency protocol, the type of CPU core that runs the OS, and not even about, uh, know anything about the system address map. Now, accelerators can operate, in fact, in virtual memory, while the dedicated TLB, together with the ESP drivers, optimizes the data allocation sharing between CPUs and accelerators. And designers, therefore, can refer to their data structures by simply using indexes, think of C, C++, or offsets. And the socket takes care of translating this into appropriate DMA transactions or cache requests, or even direct messages to other accelerators. One last important feature of the Agile Accelerator Flow in ESP is that we automatically generate a dedicated local memory subsystem that sustains the parallelism of the data path. Uh, generating a banked memory subsystem is really crucial uh, to fully automate the design space exploration, for example, uh, that is enabled by high-level synthesis, which otherwise would be severely limited by the uh, memory blocks that are provided with the technology that you target for your system. Now, when you integrate the third-party IP instead, this socket degenerates into a simpler one, where we replace the DMA in the TLB uh, with the uh, standard bus interfaces, such as DXI, and the list of configuration register with the slave interface for configuration, such as an APB bus. Um, now, our plan is to continue to grow the list of supported standards, and therefore extend the set of IPs that can really be seamlessly integrated into ESP. And note that as long as the software compiles for the supported processor architectures, which can be either RISC 5 or Spark, ESP can execute the unmodified third party software, as we demonstrated, for example, with the, uh, the NVIDIA Deep Learning Accelerator. The processor style socket is very similar to the one for the third party accelerators. Uh, one important addition, though, is the optional private L2 cache. Uh, that supports fully coherent communication across processors and accelerators. Uh, an interrupt level request acknowledge proxy also is implementing the communication protocol, which is CPU specific in this case, between the interrupt controller and uh, the uh, processor itself. This is the only CPU specific component that we have in the uh, processor tile socket, while everything else is flexible and thought with the vision that we might integrate more processor cores. As of now, we support uh, uh, the 64-bit RISC-V Ariane processor core from ETH Zurich and the Leon 3 Spark 32-bit core from Common Geisler. But we plan to integrate more. Now, I've mentioned multiple times that uh, ESP offers uh, reconfiguration options at runtime and particularly related to uh, the way accelerators communicate with memory. In fact, memory is certainly uh, the most important shared resource of an SOC. And therefore, there is no agile development flow for SOC unless memory access is well thought of in advance. So any ESP accelerator is designed without considering the system cache hierarchy and the memory mapping. There is a full decoupling between accelerator design and system design. But it can always access data in four possible ways and this can be configured at runtime. It can use fully coherent cache accesses with the optional L2 cache in the socket, which is good if you can exploit locality. It can access data in a non-coherent mode, bypassing all cache levels, and the ESP driver will take care of flushes to maintain consistency of the data during execution of the application. It can use an LLC coherent based DMA mode in which L2 caches are bypassed, but they are actually accessed in the last level cache. And this will save a lot of energy by not going to external memory whenever data is found in the last level cache. There's also a fourth variant, which is the fully coherent DMA, which is similar to the LLC coherent DMA, but instead of requiring to flush the private caches, it triggers recalls from the last level cache to private caches when data are owned by a processor's cache, for example. This model incurs very little overhead with respect to LLC coherent, but on the other hand, it supports fully transparent operation of accelerators and devices that need to be coherent, but don't have a private cache. Another option that users can select at runtime is a point-to-point -point communication among accelerators. 
Whenever possible, point-to-point -point minimizes round-trip accesses to memory, offering significant energy savings and performance improvements. But in addition to that, it also enables a finer grain uh, synchronization mechanism between accelerators. In fact, with point-to-point, -point, accelerator can synchronize at the granularity of a transaction of a memory transfer instead of at the granularity of a full accelerator invocation. So this offers higher bandwidth in the case of, for example, streaming application or batching. So in the last segment of this presentation, I want to dive a bit more into uh, some of the ESP Agile flows for accelerators. For each flow, our team has been releasing tutorials on the ESP website that serves as a set of quick start guide. So let's start with the HLS based flow, uh, which is the first one we developed. Uh, users describe their accelerator's behavior in C++ or system C by completing a skeleton design. The skeleton implements four concurrent processes, configuration, data load, data store, and computation. The synchronization primitives and the storage elements, such as, for example, ping pong buffers or circular buffers, are pre instantiated in the skeleton and can be obviously customized by the users depending on the target application. Uh, ESP uh, supports all major uh, HLS tools, including Cadence, Stratus HLS, Mentor Catapult HLS, and Xilinx Vivado HLS. If we move to the very important domain of deep learning, uh, ESP supports a fully automated flow thanks to another open source project called HLS4ML developed by the FastML lab. The HLS4ML tool translates uh, machine learning algorithms into high-level synthesis ready specification and then ESP automates the integration of the HLS code so that users are only responsible to design the deep learning model in one of the supported ML frameworks. Finally, I want to show you the example of the NVDLA integration, which is a complex open source configurable accelerator from NVIDIA, as an example of the third party flow in ESP. This is also fully documented as part of our online tutorials. Uh, the NVIDIA Deep Learning Accelerator has been integrated with the a modified RTL from NVIDIA, and the wrapper really only consists into a set of wires that connects the AXI interface to the ESP socket. The uh, NVDLA runtime, user application, and the device drivers execute on top of Linux on a RISC V based instance of ESP. Even these are unmodified, with the exception of the device driver, uh, for which we wanted to support uh, multiple instances of NVDLA controlled by the operating system in the same uh, system on chip. Results on FPGA show that uh, the performance of NVDLA small in ESP is comparable to what NVIDIA reports for ASIC after scaling uh, data to account for the different clock frequency. Uh, moreover, our Agile third-party flow enabled us to seamlessly instantiate more NVDLA tiles and therefore to prove that the performance scales almost linearly when we also scale the number of memory tiles. Now note that in order to implement three FPGA prototypes for the three ESP instances shown at the bottom of this slide, uh, we simply had to create three different configuration files and then let FPGA implementation run for us. To conclude, here are a few examples of complex SOCs demonstrated on FPGA that we presented at previous talks. Um, we've made a 12 computer vision accelerator system with as many dynamic frequency scaling domains a multi-core system uh, booting Linux SMP with tens of accelerators on which we demonstrated the runtime reconfiguration of the cache coherency models for accelerator. Uh, we've run a RISC V based system uh, with deep learning accelerators designed uh, from uh, TensorFlow models. And then uh, the RISC V based system with uh, four instances of NVDLA that I have shown you before. So once more, thank you from the system level design group and in particular from the ESP developers for watching this presentation. Uh, if you're interested, please visit our webpage and try some of our online tutorials to start designing with the Agile flow of OpenESP. Thank you.